Hey everyone, Sir Tim here again. I know I look a little bit different. Finally got a fresh cut after like freaking four months of not getting a haircut. So here's the new Sir Tim. Anyways, today we're going to start our showcase of Red Purple Law over the next three days. Now, as some of you know, we're going to have EB01 coming out sometime in May. I think it's mid-May. And EB01 has a lot of tools that actually make Red Purple Law better. To the point that if you look at if you look ahead at the East meta, so what people are playing right now uh, in Japan, etc., Red Purple Law is one of the best decks in the format, especially with Sakasuki now getting banned. This deck is gonna feast, and it's doing really well, and it's gonna get better. But I still think in Opio Sid, it could still have some room for improvement. Uh, not for improvement, it could have it could have some room to actually compete. There was a couple, there was a player at least for sure. I know at least of one player that did. Top 32 with a red purple lawless uh in the recent in one of the recent regionals. And part of that is because if you haven't noticed, Katakuri is kind of taking over the meta. A lot of tournaments in the past week and a half to two weeks, a lot of regionals have been won by Katakuri. I think he's won like four or five different regionals. Uh, especially props to Michael Curry, who won two regionals back to back with Katakuri. That's actually so freaking crazy. You usually don't have a lot of two time regional winners. Uh, he just did it literally one weekend into another. And I think Red Purple Law and Red Dex in general can actually do really well against Katakuri. So if you start seeing the field become like 33% or more Katakuri, if a third of the field or more is Katakuris, I think it makes sense to revisit some of this. Red decks like Red Purple Law, Sorrow, White Beer to actually get yourself an advantage into those matchups, right? And that's what we're doing here. That's why we're going to cover this. And also because this list is freaking fun and we got a new tool on it with being able to add Shuriaya and also being able to add Riju and the race mats into this list and even the Kamaso actually. So let's actually go ahead with the deck breakdown. Let me stop rambling for you guys. So this is my list of uh, Red Purple Law, right? So Everything here is going to be pretty straightforward. The way that Red Purple Law works is that obviously you're doing that minus three dawn and then bottom decking one of your opponent's 3k power less or less units. Because you're doing minus three dawn, it's actually more important than you realize to make sure that you still are able to kind of gain some dawn back. That way you're able to potentially be able to use the law skill every turn so you're not falling too far behind on dawn value. And that's where things like aim come into play because she's able to add a rest of dawn after you play her. Same thing with your Sachi and Penguin. When you have three or less dawn and you play the Sachi and Penguin, you get two extra, you get two rest of dawn. So again, these cards that you're able to play with your law ability are just gonna go back in dawn value. Same thing with Beppo, it's the same thing as Ain, except that he has a 1k counter and also gets you even more dawn when you attack. And even the five cost kit kind of lets you do the same thing, just lets you get a dawn back. So the kit, the Beppo, the Penguin, and the Inn are all here to get us Dawn value, to return some of that Dawn that we keep sending back to our Dawn deck. Of course, they have different benefits, like the kid is an amazing blocker, especially in this meta where, again, Katakuri cannot play Amaru into this Captain Kid blocker, neither can like a random Perona. The Beppo, again, is another 5k unit, and this one's are just another 5k units, the penguin can be a 2k counter, so sometimes it can be, it's never going to be like a dead draw in your hand. And that's what these four cards are doing in this deck, right? That gets us our down back. How do we get the opponent's units to be 3k or less? Well, we have Otama, we have Race Mats, and we have Gordon, right? So Race Mats is pretty much a Gordon here, like literally, they're both 1, 2k that do the same effect. And they even both of them are both wisdom, and they can reduce your opponent's unit power by 3k, which is perfect because this lets you be able to get like a Borsalino or a Sabo that the opponent might have down to 3k, and then you just bottom deck their unit, right? Otama is a little bit weaker than the race mats and the Gordon, but the benefit that Otama has is that she's a 2k counter. So you can just have her in your hand as a 2k counter. You don't have to actually play her like you played this card right here. But Otama can still hit stuff like Sandy Blocker or any other 5k power unit. And those are our tools in this deck to be able to reduce the opponent's power. We're not playing the pr promo Beppo. We're not playing the promo Law. We're not playing Brook. This is it. That's the only, these are the only things that I need to reduce the opponent's power, to be honest. Um, 
And that's that's all I need. By playing eight of these, I don't need anything else, right? Then we do have a couple more blockers here. We have the Shiraya and we have the Law. The Shiraya is nice because, again, it can punish the opponent putting down on their leader because it means that your Shiraya becomes as big as their leader is. So it can be really nice because you can block their leader attack with Shiraya and you just have to counter with like an national 1k. Then we have the Law, which, as we know, can destroy the opponent's hand, trash two cards from their hand. Law can be really good early on, but he becomes a bit worse as the game goes on because obviously opponents are going to have less cards. So that's only why we play two. And then we have the four queen as an additional blocker. And the reason why we like queen as well as kid is, again, there are five costs. So that means that they cannot get a Maru by the opponent yellow players, by the, by the Karakuris, right? Uh, it also kind of does make it a little bit harder, even for Sakasuki and Moria players, to be able to get rid of the king or the queen and the kid. Uh, because remember, a lot of these Moria players are only really playing... They have Great Eruption. Yeah, they could have Hina, but a lot of times it's like they have Great Eruption, and Great Eruption is not enough to bring this down to two costs to be able to die to an Absalom. So they even they or Asuru cannot do that either. So they have to have Helmepo to get it down to two cost, or they have to have a Hina to get it down to one cost, or an Ice Age to actually be able to get rid of this unit. So it kind of just puts a little bit more pressure. The Queen can also let you draw a card, kind of picks in your hand a little bit, lets you discard something that has a known counter, for example, which lets you get there. Um, so those are our blockers, and let's just kind of go through the rest of the tools, right? So Soro is just there as a nice rusher unit that can just put pressure into the opponent, that you can play for your from your law effect to just get additional attacks into the opponent. We have a Riju, which is MVP of this deck, right? The Riju allowing you to draw two cards and refill your hand is amazing with what law is trying to do. And again, you can play Riju from the law effect as well. There's been turns where I actually have been able to play two Rejus, right? Play a Reju naturally, and then play a second one with my law, and somehow I end up with so many cards in my hand now, allowing me to counter the opponent's attacks. Then we also play Kamasu, and Kamasu is usually just a 2k counter, but in certain matchups, you could actually get value from his effect, where you can KO one of the opponent's characters that costs two or less, if this Kamasu is on the field, and an if anything, he's still another 5k unit. So even if you have nothing else to summon with your law effect, you can always just summon this Kamaso and get value from there. And uh, yeah, that kind of covers the whole deck list. Now, Red Purple Law tends to be a pretty aggressive deck. But it's more aggressive by just having a lot of units. Your goal is to go wide and just have a bunch of 5k attacks into the opponent. That's why all our units here have 5k power. Because even the Shuraya can attack and go become a 5k into the opponent because it gets the, their leader's power. So like all of these cards become 5k are 5k attackers, and you end up having going so wide that you just continue pounding the opponent down with 5k, 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 5k until they run out of cards. Of course, you can still find the opportunity there to go for like a 7k hit every now and then, but a lot of times it's just going wide and just pounding into the opponent as much as possible. You're probably going to be around that four to six dawn space for most of the game, or unless you're able to kind of high roll multiple kits, then in that way, you're able to kind of actually go up to eight dawn or maybe even 10. But yeah, for the most part, you're going to be around like four to six. So that's where you kind of just push a lot of 5k powers and just maybe one 7k at a time. And again, just kind of eat up all of the opponent's cards. And, and that's what you're looking to do with this aggressive deck here. It's really good against stuff like Karakuri, because again, you kind of just go super aggressive and you feel the board really quickly. And they also have no way to really deal with K unless they have a reject early on. It doesn't do as well against... Uh, I, I, I've been struggling against Moira, to be honest, right? I've been struggling against Moira. Uh, it just is the Absalons and the A-Cost Moira are just kind of putting a lot of pressure. And the fact that the Moira has five life kind of gives him a bit more freedom to stay alive compared to a Sakasuki player. Against Sakasuki, I have found it to be like a mid's bag where sometimes you can put enough aggression that you're able to just get through to them and kill them. But other times they can find their Lushi, they can find their, their sword, they can find their, their hand blazes and kind of set you back behind enough that you're not able to actually kill them before they can kill you. And then the other matchup that's like super favorable for you is Riju. If you go against a Riju player, you literally have like an 80% win rate against them. Because <laughs> you get to be aggressive and you get to have less dawn than them, which means that because you have less dawn than them, they're not able to trigger their 
kids abilities and you also get to bottom deck their kids not send them into the discard so they don't get to get body from their kids like it, it's a ridiculous matchup but so again if you're looking to play red purple law this is my list here it gets a lot better with evo one so keep a mind on that as you look forward into may and into june if you are looking to actually if you actually like this deck and you want to play this deck in the future I will buy the cards that you don't have right now from OPO sets, right? So if you don't have your reuse, buy it right now. If you don't have your kids, buy it right now. Um, what other ones is the SR? Like, I guess, again, law is an option, so that's up to you. You don't have to play four queens, right? Especially because Rigid is going to get banned very soon. Um, you can, like, I know queens are expensive, so you can go less queens and maybe go more laws. But, like, again, Look at the list from OPO7 and EBO1 that are happening around the Japanese meta. I haven't looked at them yet and see what cards you actually need to build the deck and build it now while it's cheap before this deck becomes tier one uh, a couple months from now. But anyways, enough of me rambling, long deck breakdown. Hope you'll enjoy. Today we're going to have uh, a few matches. I think it's four or three. I, I actually don't remember. I think it's four or three matches. Uh, yeah, we have four games against Katakuri. So again, just kind of showcasing this matchup against this Jello deck that's become really popular. So we have four games against Katakuri, and uh, and then we have a bunch of other meta videos coming up over the next two days of Red Purple Law. So hope you enjoy, and if you do, make sure to like the below and subscribe to us. We post One Piece videos every single day. Enjoy the games. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. So we'll go first. And uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna mulligan this because I'm going first. I'd rather see other things, right? Do we play this Gordon now? They don't have they have no way to remove it. I guess they have Gedatsu, right? They have the Gedatsu to get rid of the Gordon, but if they're spending Gedatsu to get rid of Gordon instead of getting rid of something else, I'm also cool with that. We'll attack for five here, and uh, I think I'll just play the Shuiaya. Yeah, if they, if they use a Gedatsu to get rid of this Gordon, I'm happy. I guess they could also have like a Nami here, right? Thunderbolt. Like if they get if they hit a Nami off the trigger, it could be a problem. If they play anything remotely like a unit here, like if they play a Cracker or a Sanji, then we know that we can just like bop them, right? Yeah, like we will know that we can just bop them. I'm just gonna drop this Shuriaja right here and just say okay. Uh, I wanna take a life. I want the opponent to attack my life. The hard thing about the hard thing for the opponent is that anything like I, I want to make sure that I take my life here. They left it at the top, okay? Because I, I eventually the opponent is gonna stop hitting my life. We don't have sorrows. We can play this queen, I guess, and kind of fix our hand a little bit. Yeah, I guess we can play queen and fix our hand. Opponent's showing me a life on the top. Maybe they have like a thunderbolt here or something like that. I'm just gonna go queen into Sachi and Penguin, I think. Oh, I guess. Mm, I guess technically, I can just go in. I guess. Hmm. I want to hit that trigger. Whatever that trigger is, I want to hit it. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I don't want to attack with Shuriaya because again, I want to have my life for later. So maybe we just go for nine here. Is that crazy? Ah, no. Yeah, let's go five. Let's just go five. If the opponent defenseless, then I'm just going to go queen. I don't need to... I don't need to use... I don't need to start using my ability just yet. We're just going to go queen here. Turn one down. And we're going to trash one of these ains, right? Keep the Gordons for a potential value for later. No reason to attack with the Shuriya. I guess I could have attacked with the Shuriya and just block with queen next turn. But let's just chill here. I'm concerned that this is like a like if it, if this is an Okiku, we can bottom deck it. I'm not putting enough pressure, right? I want to. I, I need to be going a lot faster in this matchup. So it's so weird because if uh, opponents like not playing any units, so that I cannot bottom deck their units. So it makes me feel like I cannot get value here when I probably should be getting value anyways. So there's the Gadatsu. They kill the Shuriaya. I suspect it. We'll take this. We'll get rid of the Gadatsu. Do our stuff. They moved it to the bottom. Cool. The only downside here is that now we cannot get this Riju value. So we're probably just going to go for... 
We're both at six. So we're both at six. So I guess we can go in. <laughs> so we can go six and seven. At this point, at this point, I probably need to start attacking with this queen, to be honest. We can go six and seven, play another Gordon. We know we're going to bottom deck this guy. If I attack with queen, all I'm doing is that the opponent is going to attack in next turn. It's so better to go... I, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go seven and then five. We're going to play the in. The problem with playing the aim is like I cannot play the Sashi because the Sashi needs to have three down or less. This is the trigger card that the opponent has been holding on to, which is gonna be a Sanji. Yeah, it has to just be aims, right? Just give me my down back. I guess so. I mean, I have too many cards in my hand, unfortunately. Yeah, I have too, too many cards in my hand. I think I actually rather play a Gordon here than uh, than use my down to attack. So I'm just gonna attack for five, and I just I'm just gonna develop this second Gordon. Okay, we'll go here, we'll go here, we'll go like this, and we'll go like this to minus three. We'll bottom deck this guy, and now that we have less than the opponent, we can actually just go Beppo. Right? Yeah. I think we just go Beppo here. That lets me go pretty far back up and down. So we never get to play the Satch and Penguin in this situation anymore. But now we start having our attack. Now we start having like our stuff, right? Now we start having all our things here. Which is well, what we, all that we're looking for. This Queen cannot be stopped by Amaru. So I probably don't want to attack with this Queen anymore. After this turn that we just attacked with her. We can save her with the counters in our hand, which then sets up for Ryu to come down and kind of draw us card. We are five down and we'll be at seven, so we'll be at less. Ah, uh, yeah, we just trash my life. They can attack this Katakuri for uh, this for seven. Oh, they're gonna attack my life for seven. So I respect it. They can still go Ryu to kill the queen. Right? So they can still go read it to kill the, kill the queen. We also cannot get rid of all the cards and like all their stuff. So the problem is that next time they just play Big Mom. But the Big Mom I think is less of a problem. We're going to have to just go here. We can also now just play second queen as well. Just have two blockers. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. So we can go queen, Gordon, Gordon. Get rid of this. Or do we get rid of the blocker? So queen is five. Gordon is one. Do we get rid of the blocker or do we get rid of the big mom? Which one do we think is more threatening for our win condition? The opponent can go split it up next turn. Go at reject. Reject is four. So if they go reject for four to get rid of my last life or to get rid of the queen... So if they go Reject for 4, that least thing with sit down. They can go 3 here to get this to 9, 1 here to get it to 9. They can go 10-10 ten, ten twice. And we cannot block the 10-10 ten, ten twice because we don't have a lot of counters. Even with the Reju. I guess if we have double queen, it doesn't matter, right? If we have the opponent cannot get through double queen, no matter what. So I think we just go here. Yeah, I think we just go on this Sanji, right? We go for Sanji. Um, we'll go here. Turn one down. We'll trash the Ain. We'll go here. We turn three down. Bottom deck the Sanji. Play the Riju. Get a bunch of stuff. Cool. So now we can attack for five first, five second, and then seven. So five. Opponent gave me a 2k earlier, so I'm okay with saying that the opponent's not going to have a lot of value. If they go 10 cost big mom, that's going to be a problem. Opponent's going to go back to full life. But then we have all these queens to attack with next. I guess I should have gone double sits, huh? 
Yeah, I guess I should have gone double sixes. You have it? Do you have a trigger? A trigger here could be a problem. Okay, so they got they got another unit. So they got another unit. This loss are useless. We have two 5k counter worth. So we can block a 9k attack. We have two blockers though, right? We have two blockers. You can still go for Reject to get rid of my last life. Hmm. So they can go for Reject to get rid of my last life. I wish I had Sorrow. Sorrow would have been pretty nice here, huh? I feel like this game should not have been going for this long. Probably needed to play this Regis a little bit earlier, to be honest. Uh, the good thing is that we do have a lot of Dawn. I guess not a lot. We have six Dawn. Because we did do minus four last time between the Queen and this uh, law effect. So we have six. We can go seven, seven. I, I'm going to be forced to block with these queens, though, right? Seven, seven, one, seven. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be forced to block with the queen. We can get rid of any blocker, at least. The the big, the best thing opponent could do for themselves here is 10 cost big one and just rely on their triggers. Yep. If they do it like this, there's nothing I can do. Uh, Yeah, I mean... So, I can just block here, right? I can just block, block... If opponent attacks, that's okay. Okay, yeah, we just block again. And then you want to attack one of these, right? I guess they can go after my life if they wanted to. Uh, I need to have every unit that I can stay alive. Yeah, I need to have every unit that I can stay alive. So I'm just going to go like this. All right. So how do we do this? I guess it's gonna be seven and just uh, I, we just gotta hope that the opponent gets no triggers and nothing else seven seven yeah here's the first one no oh they didn't get it cool seven okay seven all right I need to keep I need to keep Gordon. I need to keep enough down for Gordon to get rid of a Sandy blocker. So this is hard. This is hard. I guess we'll go five. Oh. I mean if you have it, you have it, right? Yeah, if you, if you have the 2k, 1k, and then another... If you have the 2k, 1k... Oh, they don't have it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was trying to think. Cause it's like, I needed to keep one down. Because if the opponent had a Sanji blocker, I need a way to get it down to less than three. So that I can use the law ability. But the opponent just ended up having, like, Peros Peros on their life. And nothing else, right? Those would have been really good for them early in the game. But not as useful at the end of the game, so... Weird game, because I feel like I should be able to go more aggressive in this matchup and really, like, put pressure into them. But I kind of didn't fill my board up until, like, really late into the game. So it felt like I wasn't really putting any pressure on them. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. So I'll go first. We don't find anything good. We still don't find the kid. Since I went first, the kid would have been really nice here. Um, I guess I can just play Shuriaya next turn. Opponent has six. Do we think they take this? I guess we can always make sure that they take a next thing. Okay, they actually went ahead and counter. So they did play around the lock correctly, right? I was trying to see if I can force them to actually take that. Uh, we will take this life. They go Okiku. Uh, we can get rid of the Okiku very easily here. So we can go here to get rid of the Okiku. Um, what are we playing with four down though? What are we playing with four down? Or are we just attacking seven twice? What if we just attack seven twice? Yeah, what if we go like this? What if we attack seven twice and opponent's gonna have to counter out one of these 7k attacks? Otherwise, they get hit by this law. 
They have to counter out of this one. They didn't counter out of it. I guess they could have a trigger here now. If they hit a trigger, they get to go back below five. Yep. So they got the trigger. We'll go like this. The downside here is that they don't, if I do this, if I do this, if I do this now, I'm not going to have a lot of down for next turn. Yeah, I'm not going to have a lot of down for next turn. I guess we can play the Sachi and Penguin now. We'll let the Shiraya die. Yeah, opponent didn't get baited to go. Okay, well, Shirai was going to die no matter what then, right? Uh, We'll give them a 1k here. I guess if... I don't want to give you the Queen, actually. I don't want to give you the Queen. And the Kamaso seem really... I think I just counter with Law. I don't think I'm actually going to play this Law. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually believe I'm going to play this Law anytime soon. They left it at the top. Uh, yeah, so as, uh, we need we need to be able to play the Sachin Penguin to be able to get back on Don if, if we want to do anything. So we go, we can go Tama. We can go Tama to get rid of this Perispero. Or we can just go like Beppo into Sachin and Penguin. And then the opponent has, what, three attacks next turn to kind of punish us with? We have the Camassos, though, so I think I'm cool with this. Yeah, we'll... Go, okay, I guess we have to go with Tama because otherwise our recall is not doing anything. We're not we're not sending anything back. Yeah, we're not sending anything back, right? Yeah, we're not sending anything back. So I guess I'll just go five again. And uh, yeah, we'll just go Tama here. Uh, we'll play Sorrow first. We'll attack with the Sorrow. Continue putting pressure into the opponent. Opponent gives me another 2k. We'll go here. Return 3 Dawn. Bottom deck this black boy. And play our Sachi and Penguin so that we can get 2 Dawn back. Beppo could have potentially been better, but I really want to have this Dawn as close as we can. Like, I, feel, I really feel like having this done is going to be super important, right? So here we can go Kamasu and Beppo. And then we can give Kamasu to save my units again. Opponent's going to play 7 cost Big Mom here. Yep. And we're going to trash alive. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Do we want the kid or do we want the queen? We probably want the queen, right? We probably want the queen. Opponents, uh, the problem is that I'm just losing, right? Opponent's going to have Gedatsu. I'm just going to lose next turn. And especially if the opponent hits a trigger here. So let's go Sorrow first. Let's see, let's see what the opponent is willing to block. Oh, they hit the get and trigger. So they just win then, right? They absolutely just win here. I guess I'm gonna have to go Queen and hope that I find a 2k. Oh, they actually blocked that. Alright, because the problem is that I cannot play any of these blockers. I'm losing to too many things. I'm losing to way too many things. <laughs> way too many things here. Reject into the opponent attacking. Opponent has five attackers anyways. I only have two cards. Imagine if I had Sorrow here. That would have been the dream. That would have been the dream, huh? It doesn't matter, right? There's no way that they lose to the 5k from the Sorrow. What I could do is that I could play Riju here and just get more counters. Get two cards. Okay, we got, I mean, we got a, a 1k and we got a 2k. So we got to replace. So we get the blocker. 
opponent could have reject it cannot be amaru because amaru doesn't rest the queen that's why we play queen their big bomb is useless their ten cast uh how can the opponent split this right they can go nine oh nine 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 three times they can go ten 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 we can go seven eight nine ten if they go ten 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 they win yeah if they go ten 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 they actually win the game yeah if they go ten 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 they win the game if they go reject they kill my queen or take my life whichever one they have to kill the queen i think it's better if you kill the queen with the reject right Wait, am I... Rigid is 5 cost. So is Rigid just... No, Rigid is 5 cost. Yeah, because Sabo can die to Rigid. So if they go 4 for Rigid, they can still go 8 on Karakuri, 8 on Gadatsu, 8 on Big Mom, and then you go... Okay, so you have like 2 8s and 1 10, or you can go 2 9s and 1 8. So they go for it, right? They go for the 9. They go for 9. Here's my problem. If I counter here and the opponent goes reject. So if I counter here and the opponent goes for reject, they still just kill us. Because it can go reject. And I have to I have to counter here, right? We said it. We can't we can't defend the tense. It just makes it so easy for them to do the math here. I just have to hope that they don't have reject. Yeah, I just have to hope that they don't have reject. If they have reject, they win the game. I lose to reject every single time. No matter how we no matter how we slice it. Yeah, no matter how we slice it, we always lose to reject here. They don't have a rusher. Uh at least now okay so that wasn't a reject at least now i can just block with queen if necessary they got chosen so they had a two they have a 2k now i mean you're gonna lose next turn right if you cannot kill us this turn there's no combination that can get you there right am i missing something you can kill two units and i will still have four attacks i guess i only have three down you know what? I only have three down, so there actually is a way for them to just survive. I mean, I just take it. Again, we always lose to it, right? We're always losing to the reject. That hasn't changed. That has not changed. An opponent just gave up, so they didn't have the reject, huh? Uh, I wish I could see their hand. Yeah, they didn't have the reject here. If I had another card in my hand, I could actually check out what their cards was. Yeah, they didn't have the reject, so we were okay, right? Yeah, at that point, we did the math, right? We were going to lose to three 10k attacks, but once the opponent chose to do a 9k attack, we had exactly enough to counter out of their 9k, and then it's just, if the opponent has reject, they have reject. Sometimes you can't play around it. That card is ridiculous, and it's for a good reason, so GG's. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. Um, the opponent chose to go second. We don't have Kid, but we do have this Queen and the, the Shuriaya. And we have the Sashi and Penguin. That I don't mind doing this, right? Opponent doesn't have a good way to remove this Gordon unless they literally put a Gedatsu on the Gordon. Or we hit like a Thunderbolt. Uh, we'll go like this. Okay. And we'll just play the Shuriaya here and just kind of develop the 5 blocker next turn. The opponent still doesn't have Gedatsu here. They go attacking for 6. We take this. We get the aim. Opponent gets Pearl Sparrow. Do we go Queen this early? I kind of want to fix my hand a little bit. So we can go Queen and then go Sachi and Penguin. And I still think that's decent for us. Sure. I guess I'm kind of concerned about Okiku. Maybe we want to attack first. Yeah, maybe we just attack first five twice. See if we get an Okiku here or something else. That's going to be a problem. Okay, opponent gives me a 2k there. We're going to go Queen. Use the card action. Uh, we're going to trash this aim for now. And uh, oop, we need to do this first. And we're going to go like this. 
go back to three down so that we can go back to five next time. The opponent goes for the Gadatsu, kills the Shiriaya. We gladly take this life. So we can go race max this turn to bottom deck this Gadatsu. And uh, we can play something else here to so just develop pressure. I guess we can go, we can go, because we, we're going to probably play both, both of these, right? So that leaves me with one down. So with the one down, maybe we just go for a 7k. Yeah, so maybe we just go 5k, 5k, 7. Okay, well, I mean, I wasn't going to attack with it. I'm going to attack with the queen. Let's just continue putting pressure into the opponent. Okay, opponent actually goes ahead and does everything. Uh, let's go ahead and attack with Sorrow first. Nope. They're going to give me another 2k and another 1k there. All right, so now we just go race mats, bottom deck it, and then we'll go here. Now, the only downside here is that I'm not going to have a lot of down left over, right? We can also just go... No, I think I want to go for the Shiraya, just because it's another blocker to protect one of my units. We only have four down now, right? We only have four down. So it's a potential that next time we don't do our down effect, which I think it makes sense because the opponent is probably going to play seven cards big mom here. They have to try to kill my units, but the Shiriaya is also being such a good blocker that it makes it hard for them to kill my unit with just the Karakuri. Uh, we can actually... Well, we don't have enough down to play the Queen is the problem. Yeah, so they're going to go like this, and we're just going to go here and give them a 1k. Um, I'm actually going to give them a... Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, let's give them this. Let's give them that Queen. Oh, ooh. They just kept five done open. They kept five done open. So there's going to be Big Mom next turn. Are we playing anything this turn? Or are we just going five, five, and seven twice? Seven, five, five, five multiple times. Do I need to play another unit? I honestly think I do want to play another unit. So I think I'm just going to go multiple fives. I think I'm just going to go five, five, five and just play the Kamaso. If the opponent plays Big Mom next turn, I'm still in a decent spot. Yeah, we're going to go here. Okay. We're going to go here. Just eat up their cards right now. So how do I die next turn? I don't think I die. Yeah, I don't think I die. I think we just got another six here. Just eat up so many cards from the opponent's hand that they're forced to just not have anything for the next turn. Okay, you find the trigger. I guess you should have taken that life earlier if you find the trigger there. Ah, they got the trigger with the life. Okay, so then we go here with the Kamaso and we're chilling. Now the opponent can play Big Mom, go back up to two life. But then next turn, because we kept all our done. We're able to done up our units and just attack the opponent for these big 7k attacks and the opponent's going to struggle. What did they trash here? They trash another Satori. So they trash a 2k counter. That's kind of crazy to me when you're this low, right? Yeah, like we just save this. We just keep as many units as possible, right? So we just keep as many units as possible and same thing. We can just attack for 5 to begin with. Okay, opponent takes it. Uh, I'll attack for five one more time. They take it. Now we can attack for seven. They take it. And then we can attack for ten with queen. And they get it. Yep. GG's. Yeah. Uh, just ended up just putting so much pressure on them, right? And they also didn't really get a lot of meaningful triggers, unfortunately. right? They had that one beige that one turn. And they got the, you're the one who should disappear. But aside from that, they really didn't hit any triggers out of their six life because they got one life from Lin Lin. Um, which also helped us out a lot, right? Helped us out a lot, but we just kind of developed this board that the opponent just couldn't deal with because we just have too many units attacking into them. And the opponent just had a lot of 2k counters that they kept countering with, which just ended up, like the 2k counters aren't good, but if I just have a bunch of 5k units slamming into your face, they're less good. And the Shiraya really cock blocked that one 9k hit that the opponent had with their Katakuri. So, GG's. In this match, we're going against Katakuri. So, this is a good hand, right? 
The opponent has a hard time dealing with this kid. We don't have a turn. We don't have a play for turn three. We don't have a play for turn three. So I guess we're just going to swing for... We can swing for seven and just keep this Gordon. Yeah, we can just swing for seven here. Opponent has to counter out. They don't. They don't get a trigger either. And we just play Gordon here. That allows me to play Kid. Right? That allows me to play Kid and bottom deck anything that the opponent plays here. So we'll go for Kid. We'll go here. Right? Then we'll go here, minus three. Select this target. We're going to play this law. And it uh, really doesn't matter. Use the card action. Go here. We trash two cards, Nami and this. And uh, we are kind of short on done now, but we can go ahead and bounce back up with the Ains next turn. So we'll attack for six. We didn't get anything crazy out of that, out of that, but still better than nothing. So starting next turn, we probably want to just start building up our Dawn again. Yeah, opponent gets another pair of Sparrow from Trigger anyways. Cool. They get the Pudding, they get the seven costs. So next turn is going to be seven costs value do we ever block with one of these laws opponent can attack me for eight i'll take one and i'll block the other one i think yeah so i think i'll take one i'll block the other one um we can go again we can go in i don't think i give them the draw from Perispero. Opponent's going to actually take that. All right. So I guess we're going to go here. Do I want to play... Hmm. I feel like I want to keep... So if we go like this, we can go minus three and go another minus two and we should still be in a decent spot. I shouldn't be attacking with this kit, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to force the opponent to give me another 2k. Yep. One, two, three. Bottom deck this. We're going to play the Satch and the Penguin this time, right? To kind of get back up and done. Uh, we should have actually done this first because we could have attacked for seven. That was just my misplay. Yeah, we're going to trash the top of our life. At this point, we're kind of going all in, right? Yeah, we're telling the opponent we're going all in. We go for the 2k. We give them the 1k. Yeah, so we can play another kid here. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to actually get rid of this pair of Sparrow unless we literally attack into the opponent. Do we actually have to attack into it? Like if we had another, if we had another draw, we'd be better. Uh, we definitely want to play this kid. I guess let's let them have it. I need to get rid of this unit. Yeah, I need to get rid of this unit. The opponent gets the pudding. So we can attack for seven. Play second kid. Go here. And we're going to play read you, right? Just refill our hand. And then attack for seven again. Let's get the opponent down to one. We'll keep both our blockers here. Because the, the blockers don't get punished by Amaru because they're five costs. Opponent can play the 10 cost big mom, I guess. But then they're still gonna be at two life when I have all these attackers, and we still have eight done next turn. These kids have given us a lot of value. A Sandy blocker we can punish with the Otama. Wait, what? Okay, so I'm just gonna go here. I guess you're forcing me to give you both blockers. But you have you're down to one life. So you force me to give you both blockers, but you're down to one life. Do we ever play around that Sanji from Trigger? Do we ever... They, they get a 2k, so they have a 2k here. Actually, we can just save one of these kits. Right? We can just, like... The problem is that by giving up the Otama, we're saying... If you have a Sanji on the trigger, you just get that, right? So we're saying if you have a Sanji from the trigger, you just get there. So we're going to start with seven here. Remember that we have this Sorrow, okay? 
Start another seven here. They gave me two two Ks. Two two Ks. So they don't have any one Ks left, right? So can we just go for five? You just told me you don't have any one case. They get an extra life. All right, so this is easy because this is just going to be five. And no matter what you get, you can get there, right? Because even if you get a Sanji off of that, we're still okay. Yeah, that was close. That was close. I guess if they had another here. No, because they needed to trash a card from their hand, right? Or is it actually, I think it gives you a life anyways. H how does this work? Does it give you a life anyways if you don't have any cards in your hand? Because he says then trash one card. So the trash one card is a different effect, right? So if you have nothing opponent card tank, you're getting another life from there. But that still wouldn't have mattered because then we could have attacked for five and then play the sorrow and done the rest. So we still got there. So GG's. Hey, welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed those matches against Karakuri. And you kind of see what I was talking about. You're able to kind of just put so much pressure into the opponent. Um we, we got to see it all, right? We got to see Silver Rush making a difference. We got to see Kid making a difference. We got to blow up their hand with the lock a, a, a few times there. We just joined us a bunch of cards. The Katakuri deck struggles because you're able to go so wide against them, right? You're able to go so wide against them and you just have so much pressure. You just need to watch out that you don't tap low enough that you're going to just die to the opponent's attacks, right? Uh, even when they play the seven cost big mom i don't care i just trash my own life because we just want to aggro into them and set ourselves up to win on the next turn so that's kind of what you saw here in this matches against uh, against katakuri we're gonna have two more videos of red purple law over the next two days so if you like this content and you want to see more gameplay of this make sure to like it below and subscribe to us we post one piece videos every single day enjoy your day i'll see you all again tomorrow